Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, viewers. I'm Matthias Aufiku, news editor of the Namibian Sun newspaper. Welcome to another exciting edition of The Agenda, the show where we unpack and analyze current affair issues that, make, that are making headlines in the country. Today, I'm joined by a very, very dynamic uh, panel, uh, Mr. Desmond Amiela, a seasoned businessman. Welcome, sir. Yes. Mr. Dico Smith, a seasoned politician. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Yeah, today we, we talk NIEF, the National Equitable Empower Economic Empowerment uh, Bill. It's been making headlines again this week. It came up again. Uh, I'm sure you, you've heard about it. We'll discuss it. But just before we get to those discussions, um, uh, the, earlier this week, uh, we lost the uh, former minister, Mr. Kadenambo Kadenambo. May his soul rest in peace. Uh, maybe just any word or two from, from the two of you. Yeah. Um yeah, I was really shocked when I learned about the passing of uh, Honorable Kasanambu. Mm -hmm. uh, although I was aware of the fact that he was uh, sick for quite some time and in hospital, you always hope and, and pray that uh, the person will recover and be with you again. So when I, I learned about his passing, it was, as I said, a shock. And I, th I think and I think many of us out there will, um, will agree with me that we have lost really a true son of the soil. Mm -hmm. A very strong and outspoken person. Uh, he was, in many ways, he was actually a treat. It was always nice to, to, to listen to him, to his arguments, his way of uh, uh, saying things. Uh, yeah, I think he was a character to really on his own. Yeah. And that's why the loss is so much greater. Yeah, I, uh, I feel sorry. I, uh, I, I would like to pray to, for his family to, 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 to have the courage and to go through this difficult time and to be blessed uh, to, uh, to learn to, to accept what is not easy to accept. And may his soul rest in peace. Yeah. This one? Yeah. No, I, I, I echo those, uh, those sentiments. In fact, um, KJ and I uh, contracted this dreadful uh, uh, COVID thing around about the same time. And, and we were actually sharing remedies during that time. And I was fortunate, in, fortunate enough to recover. Uh, in a short period of time, but we kept in touch until he was no longer able to do so. Um, and uh, for me personally, man, I've, I've lost, uh, Kiki was my brother, my comrade, my friend. Uh, I've worked closely with him since 2008, there about, uh, uh, politically there is. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a lot of uh, underground activities he was a master strategist, political strategist. He was a courageous gentleman. We didn't always agree. Uh, uh, in fact, we disagreed more than we agreed. Yeah. But there was just this thing um, between the two of us and also comrades like uh, Arma Samkiu, Baino, and so forth, because that, that was the circle. And um, he, he was such a huge inspiration because once he believed in something, man, uh, there was no turning back. Um, he's gone now, physically, but in spirit, he remains with us because one has taken so much from him. And yeah, um, that's the destiny of us all. And yeah. it's, it is what it is, I guess. We just have to celebrate his life and take the good and, and move on. Yeah. Our day surely shall come some, someday. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, most definitely. Thank you for the gentleman. Let's get into the business of the day. Um, we continue to fight inequality, poverty, and all the vices that are hampering our country from reaching through development and uh, really improving the lives of our people. This week, the, the topic of uh, NIEV came up again at State House. Um, well, five years later, it's still pending. Do we really want this? What is the delay? Mr. Smith, let me start with you. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's a good question, what, what is the delay? I think the delay is caused by the fact that that bill is 
is half cooked. I think uh, it's not uh, an honest and sincere uh, um, plan that uh, the government is coming, coming with. Uh, nothing that is supernatural, or I will say unnatural, unnatural can, can really survive uh, the test of time. And I think this, this bill is not properly cooked, it's not properly planned, it's not properly written because it has too many flaws and shortcomings. Uh, but it's, it's a must that we, we, we must have change mm -hmm. in our uh, social economic life in Namibia. Uh, and I've said it the other day when the things went wrong in South Africa some months ago. The thing of that it was played over the arrest of uh, former President Zuma in South Africa, that they had that uh, uh, uprising in South Africa. It was not about the arrest of, of Zuma. The whole situation in South Africa was just waiting for to, to be triggered. Mm -hmm. And the arrest of, 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 of Zuma was just a trigger. Any, anything else could have triggered it. It was just waiting there. And I've said at that time, we are in the same situation. Namibia is in the same situation. If we don't come up with tangible solutions of our problems here, especially, especially regarding the poor, to improve the lives and the quality of life of, of, of our poorer people, mm -hmm. then we are heading the same way, the same way. Our situation is only waiting for a trigger. We had the problems last week here in, uh, in, 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 in Wintuk, in Katatura, with the land grabbing and those kind of things. Luckily, it was, it was solved quickly. But it's not been solved, it's just been suppressed. So we must find something that's acceptable to the majority, the vast majority of our country. Mm -hmm. If we don't do this, we are heading the same way. Yeah. This one, do you agree with those sentiments? <laughs> Yeah, some of it I do, mm -hmm. but I, my approach to these kind of things is slightly different because yeah. I'd like to look at it from the uh, macro uh, perspective and also ideological in the sense that um, we have a history, a unfortunate history, mm -hmm. and we need to contextualize why we need things like NIF, mm -hmm. in my view. And that is because of that history, we, there ought to be some kind of analysis done to say what are our binding constraints? What is inhibiting us to be able to bring about the Namibia that we so wish for all of us? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, often in my view, the mistake comes when we begin to look at it from a class, self-interest, mm -hmm. and all other interest point of view. Near for me or any other of the kind, must seek to address the common good. Yeah. So when you know what are your inhibiting constraints, you will be able to come up with something that covers everything. Mm -hmm. And, but if we don't do that, you will always have a situation where somebody from a, let's look at it from a, a, histo a historic point of view, who's been advantaged by what has happened in the past, mm -hmm. will always feel like, no, this thing is designed to take from me. Yeah. Now, we may have failed ourselves in terms of how this thing was pitched to all of us to understand mm -hmm. the intent of it. And also, the process we undertook to involve everybody so that there's openness and honesty and we all know is for common good. Mm -hmm. I think those small nuances and misunderstandings is what brings us where we are. We shouldn't be here. Because if you really look at it, NIEF must seek to achieve good for Namibia. Not for Desmond over Angle Smith, but for Desmond and Angle Smith together. Mm -hmm. But if we are not careful, I, I see this thing relegating towards, uh, um, you know, more based on, on our past. Mm -hmm. Namibia must become competitive. Competitive against who? Its peers in the region, Africa, and the world. Mm -hmm. And in that, in, 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 as we traverse that route, 
We also then need to know our competitive advantages, who do we align to, at what point, yeah. and how much do we get back. Mm -hmm. That's more for me when I look at these things, yeah. not at the, at the micro level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Smith, before we started the show, one of your concerns really was the, the fundamentals and, and really the, my, the little details within what's proposed. Can you just touch on some of those that you've identified no. that are mm. problematic? Yeah, you, you see, uh, the thing is with this bill, why well, I said it's not uh, properly uh, cooked, it's not properly researched. Uh, if you look at some of the, the clauses in the bill, it's, it's actually not sort of bringing uh, uh, sort of trust uh, amongst those people who are actually sort of running the economy in this, uh, at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And that is, unfortunately, and, but this is what we have, that uh, the e economy of the country is mainly, I will say, maybe 50, 55 percent uh, in the hands of the white people, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, we can't deny it. It's, it's not it's more. like that. Uh, if not more, yeah, if not more. Uh, so we, to, to, for, for those people to, to have the confidence to trust the government in, in what they are saying they are going to do, the bill must be written very clearly to make those things clear to each and everybody. What does it actually entail? What, what will happen if you share? Do you have the trust? Do you have sort of the surety? And, and if not, then you will not get confidence and you will not get the support of the people uh, who is running the economy uh, to, to open up and to share. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, a, it's not an easy task that we are settled with uh, to, 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 to create confidence uh, with those people that have, uh, that they will not lose what they are having, uh, but we must also sort of persuade them and convince them that there's no other way we have to share. Mm -hmm. If we want to bring prosperity to this country of ours, we have to share. It is unacceptable that Namibia has the highest unemployment and, uh, 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 you know, level sort of, not unemployment, but uh, uh, the, the, the biggest uh, difference between rich and poor, you know, in the world. That, that is totally unacceptable. We can only bring peace and stability and prosperity for us all if we share. Yeah. I must be prepared. Uh, you know, it's not necessary for me to have millions in the bank. And, you know, and there's other people who doesn't have food to eat today. Uh, we, must, we must share. We must create with the money that we have. We must invest it in this country. We must create more, uh, more uh, job opportunities. We must make it more possible for people to earn a decent salary uh, from which you can live from, yeah. uh, and, and all these type of things. But uh, we must have the confidence in the bill. Uh, a bill must not protect only one side of the community of our people. It must, it must protect and give confidence to the, to the whole nation. Everybody must have that, that, that sort of trust in the bill that uh, it will also look after my concerns and, uh, and after my, uh, my future and that of my children and my, their children. So if, if we do that, if we can bring that confidence, uh, then I think uh, the, the people, especially the white people, because this whole thing, unfortunately, has been sort of uh, polarized, you know, between white and black, because it is a white and black issue. So it, we don't have to run away with it or, or call it other names. Let's, yeah. let's call a spade a spade so that everybody can understand uh, what is the problem and what we are talking about. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I just feel that. And also what, what really concerns me is uh, I think the, the government should have known by now that uh, there's a lot of people out there and it's not only white people, also black people, that are not happy with certain clauses of the bill and also feel that they must be, it must be written in a different way. Mm -hmm. There must be uh, some, some, some new research, some new sort of uh, ideas must come to the fore. Uh, but when this uh, investment and development board was 
uh, was uh, appointed, mm -hmm. and they came up with their, 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 uh, their report. I was shocked when I heard uh, His Excellency the President says, yeah, uh, your report, you are not supporting uh, NIF. Now, were they appointed to, to come up with a plan to support NIRF, or where they come to come up with a plan that is workable, that's acceptable by the majority of these people. And that is the problem that we have in this country, that we appoint people only to do what we want them to do. And if they don't do it, then it's not good. And I think uh, the, the plan the, uh, which the board came with is, 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 is really something to start to, to work on. I think Which it's, it's good that? ideas. Investment board, investment ah. promotion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, they, are, they are very good ideas, their approach is right, and I think if, if they are given the chance to, to run with it, yeah. to, to come with more proposals, I think maybe that might be the solution. Mm -hmm. I think their approach is totally different from what it was up till now. Yeah. Yeah. And just before I come to you, Desmond, yeah. um, Mr. Smith, you spoke so elaborately on why we really need to fight this monster called inequality. Um, 1989 Constituent Assembly, it was a give and take situation. Yeah. And to fight inequality, someone has to lose something for someone to yeah. gain. Yeah. So how, how do you then balance those two? No, you see, it, it just has to be. You, you, you can't keep everything and, and think, you know, you, you will go anywhere. You have to share, you have to, uh, you know, if you take the, the poorest of the poor and you take the rich people, the, the difference between those two groups are too big. Mm -hmm. And the one have to, to, to give for the other one to survive. Mm -hmm. So if we are not prepared to do it, then there's something terrible wrong with us. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to say, uh, and I don't want to, 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 to think of that, that is the attitude of the white people. Really, and if it's the attitude, then something seriously is wrong. Mm -hmm. Then we have to change that attitude. We are, we are different people in this country. We are white people, we are black people, and we are brown people. So to live in harmony and peace and prosperity, we have to share. There, there's, there's, no, no, there's no two stories about it. Mm -hmm. We have to get down from our thrones and, and share this, what we have. We have to share with others so that they can also have a decent life. Yeah. Is this the way to yeah. go? Yeah, look, uh, my uncle is from a different school of uh, orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I hear a lot of concern in terms of sharing. I agree there must be transformation, mm -hmm. but I don't see much that there is to share. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you will always have the problem of people protecting themselves now. But I want to just quickly, I want to address this thing from the point of view of uh, the, its micro nature, <coughs> like I said in the beginning. Everything in my view rises and falls on leadership. Leadership felt it necessary to say, what type of leadership do we want to be in bringing about the Namibia we wish to see for all of us? I think we should be a transformational leadership transforming all things that needs to be transformed to achieve the objectives of us as a Namibian people. That will include restorative justice. It will include, uh, you know, transforming ourselves into a ability to be able mm -hmm. to have more so that there's enough to share. I'm not really the one for, uh, you know, give and take because you took from me at some point. Yes, I think we have even reached an agreement to say we're not going to go there. What is a problem today is the economy, the structure of our economy. And often people miss that point, that we operate in an economy, an economy that is designed to constrain the majority of us to play a meaningful role and therefore expand the cake. If we don't do that, we will continue looking for avenues as to how we can take from one another. And for how long can you do that for? How much do you have? How much does our white people have in Namibia to take from? Mm -hmm. 
I think we are making the mistake of allowing this economic structure to continue as is because it was designed for a specific reason, which was an apartheid economy, mm -hmm. right? But even our people, our white people, are not capacitated enough from an industrial point of view for them to take advantage of that economy, to then say that, okay, at least we have one of our own who is benefiting from this structure. Mm -hmm. It's multinationals. And the problem becomes even greater when it goes to the, the, the grand scale of the, the African context. Look at how much money flies out of Africa from an illicit uh, capital outflow point of view. I think it's, to, it's $50 billion, the last statistics I checked. And, and, and Africa's income is about, uh, I don't know, 25 or thereabout. So let's begin to look at these things this way. Let's address what we do to, to assist the situation as it is. This, I think there's an element of us or a, a permissible environment which allows us not to grow as Namibia. People often talk about um, foreign direct investment. What does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. There's nobody in the world that is sitting with capital and he's looking at the map of the world and saying, where do I take my money on the basis of, uh, uh, you know, Messi or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They look for where their money has the best return. Now, I, I, and, I'm, and I'm talking to you as a businessman. Mm -hmm. Before this point, I see, I see where you are going, because yeah. it brings me to my next point, the issue of, uh, there's always been the talk that these things might scare away investors and so on, the economic transformation that is. Sure. So, but before we get to that, I just want you guys to gather your thoughts. We just go for a break quickly and we touch on the topic. Sure. Well, we're back from the ad break. The conversation is certainly hitting the right notes. Before I went on the break, Desmond, you, 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 were, you were heading towards um, the issue of uh, FDI investors, attracting investors and so on. Can you just continue with that? Yeah. Uh, what I was wanting to say is, uh, look, as a country, we need to learn to compete with our best in, in this, in this um, in this, in this world called, uh, you know, the, the capital world. And our best must involve everybody. We have enough, I think, if we can just begin to get past our differences, which are small differences, although they are influenced by our history. Mm -hmm. And this is where the element of, of leadership comes in. Mm -hmm. The leadership has a responsibility to make sure that Uncle Smith right there does not feel any different to how I feel as as, 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 as I relate to, to, to this thing called Namibia. And then we, from there, we then are able to hold hands as one and say, we are going to compete as one for the benefit of Namibia. Let me just give you an example. Um, we have somebody which I believe is one of our extraordinary uh, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. His name is Knowledge Kati. 
Uh, mm -hmm. He's my brother. I'm, I'm, I, I can, you know, use him as an example. Yeah. The gentleman has been able to achieve things that most of us in Namibia, we still do not understand how he does it. But he does it on an international level. How often do we pay attention to that skill? Because it's a skill. It's an art. It doesn't just come from, you don't go to an institution and you learn these things. Mm -hmm. It's acquired through experience, through socialization, and of course, uh, somewhat education. Those are the kind of things I'm talking about to say, we have so many of them. We have the Quinten van Royens. Look what, uh, what, what, what he has been able to do. Uh, there was another company of ours, um, Prosperity Health. Mm -hmm. They had gone as far as Tanzania and those places, and they made an impact. Uh, Paragon, in our small way, we are also following their footsteps, mm -hmm. and, and, and we are, you know, we, we, we are getting there. Mm -hmm. So this is what we need to harness and begin to say, let's create an institution where we begin to say, these people must play a role in showing us on how to compete outside Namibia and bring what we then call FDI. Mm -hmm. But if you are thinking that there's a, somebody there you need to run after who is a national of America or of any other country, and you must get them to bring their money here, they will always want more from you. Because their interest is not to develop Namibia. Their interest is to get the best. If you go to Afghanistan today, guns are blazing, but there are investors there, if there are opportunities. Mm -hmm. Namibia cannot be scaremongered into conceding some of these things in the name of so-called uh, FDI. Mm -hmm. We need to develop our own capacity and use our own people and skill to go out there and compete for that capital and bring it here. Mm. We have the resource. You, you get. Uh, for quickly, I just want to give you one example I picked up on one of uh, uh, these African leaders that I follow. His name is actually President Kagame. Mm -hmm. He said once, I don't know whether he meant to say this, he said he doesn't understand why Africa must go borrow money from other markets and then we must pay back with our resources. Mm -hmm. Why can't we come up with our own currency and pay back those loans in, in but those, that's dangerous stock. Mm -hmm. So you must begin to understand that there's an engineered type of uh, strategy that people use and apply on countries such as ourselves so they can get the best out of us. Mm -hmm. These things we are fighting over near in terms of how it relates to your small business mm -hmm. and the possibility that Desmond will become your partner, those are crimes. I think if we really harness our common good and we go out there as one, Namibia can get its share of the cake. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, the issue of uh, investors and FDI being afraid to come to jurisdictions where the laws and policies are, are seem not to be favorable. This one said, now we shouldn't be scared, Mongo. Yeah. What is your take? Yeah, <clears throat> you see, uh, I want to agree 100% with what uh, Desmond have said about our own ability. I think we, we have quite, quite a lot of money in, in this country, the local people, the Namibian people. Uh, but because we, 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 we don't it seems to me we don't trust each other, we don't have confidence in, in each other uh, to, to use that money to develop this country to, to, to our own good. Uh, now we tend to, to rather move this country, uh, the, the money out of the country and invest it somewhere offshore, some, somewhere else. And I think this is also what Desmond, has, uh, if I understood him right, what he was referring to, that uh, we have the capacity really to, 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 to grow the, uh, the moving economy. Yeah. If we invest the money that we have here in our country, by doing that, we will create confidence for the, for the foreign investor. If they see that we have confidence in our own country and mm -hmm. invest our money here and grow our economy, they will come and invest here. Because an investor, a foreign investor, will only invest where he's sure that he can get a dividend on his money, that he can make money, because that's why investor is called investor. He invests his money to make money. Uh, but uh, we must also be very careful with uh, foreign investors. 
uh, what is the real, uh, why, are they, why are they coming to your country? Do they only come to, 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 to invest or they do, do they have alternative motives? Especially, because, you know, we know our natural resources that we have mm -hmm. and we must protect those natural resources uh, and to, to use it to the, to, the, to the best of our people and its country for the development. So to attract foreign investors into the country, uh, we must have confidence in our own economy. We must prove that we are prepared and willing to grow our own economy uh, so that we can attract and get those foreign. But if we do it, we must be very careful uh, that not to, to scare those, those investors off, to come with a lot of stories and, 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 and things against the investors uh, nobody likes that, and especially not a foreign investor with, 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 with enough money, you know, to invest in a country where it can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I, I believe that if we stand together as one, if we trust each other and we accept each other as Namibians, really I hope and I pray day in and day out that that thing of... of, of of tagging each other, uh, that we must, uh, that, that thing must stop. We must see each other as brothers and sisters and as Namibians, and we must work together as one to, 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 to better our country and the lives of our people. To yeah. me, that is most important. That mm -hmm. If you go around, if you look at the poor of the poorest, and you see how they are suffering, and you go to the to the, to the suburbs where the rich people, those who with money are living, then it's really, really so hurting to, to see the difference in, 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 in the quality of life. Yes. And that, that is what I want to see. We must, we must solve that problem mm -hmm. as soon as possible to create peace and stability and prosperity for, for all of us and not for, for, for certain people. Yeah. And to come in there? Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, uh, before this slips my mind, um, <laughs> any nation is built on, on the strength of its young. And I can tell you, I, I spend a lot of time with people younger than me mm -hmm. who aspire to be better than me in business, which I welcome. And um, I don't think we are doing enough in investing in these young people because they, they, we've got some extraordinary minds out there mm -hmm. who are capable in taking on this thing, this, this, this poverty thing, or whether the wealth creation thing mm -hmm. that, that we are struggling with as a nation. And I think if we, the, the first things are important, and that is your, your foundation. Where we are in terms of leadership, because I remember I started with saying, it, everything rises and falls on leadership. Mm -hmm. For the many years to come, even up to 50 or 100 years, we should have a deliberate act to have leadership that considers itself as a necessary mean to the end. Why is that important? Because it means that that leadership is there to enable the ones that are yet to come. But if you begin to have a leadership that is unto itself, a leadership that must be recognized because it struggled, it did this and that for you, it ends with them. Now, I want to advocate or I want to create the debate to say, do we have the kind of leadership in Namibia now going forward? Even what type of leadership do we desire? Okay. to be able to achieve all these things. Because that, that plays a very important role in being able to say, as a country, what we want to achieve and when and with what. Even I can play a part of the kind of leadership that we need. Not the leader. I can be, you know, mm -hmm. the necessary mean to the end. Yeah. But I can tell you, I have the ability to lead this country in a way and manner that it ought to be led yeah. to be able to bring about the change we wish to see. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the poverty gap that you're talking about, 
I don't think we can fix that with government resources. We don't have enough. The colleagues in government don't sit there every day and they design policies to say, okay, let's marginalize this, let's, let's prefer the other. There is simply just not enough for all. Yeah. And that's why you see that intense contestation of, of, um, of priorities and resources. Mm -hmm. Because we are not growing the cake. Why are we not growing the cake? Because we are not investing in the right things. Mm -hmm. Our young people. Yeah. Innovation. How often do we innovate? Where are our innovation centers? Research and development. Look at that desert. I grew up in Swakopmund. For sure, there ought to be something we can do with those sand dunes. There ought to be something we can do with the moist and all that that comes from the ocean. Why don't we invest in these things and give these opportunities to our young people so they can begin to make us more competitive? We can produce products from there that the rest of the world may not, may not be able to have because they don't have the climatic advantage or even the, 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 the natural resource. Mm -hmm. So, in conclusion on this point, I want to say we need to become smart in our approach, whether it's leadership and how we relate to one another. Yeah. We cannot continue with this uh, apartheid economy and hope to achieve the, 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 the dream, I mean, um, the dream Namibia. Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. Because it was not designed for us. Mm -hmm. It was designed to take from us yeah. the banks. What role are they playing in, 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 this, in this, our economy? Mm -hmm. Are they transformational in nature or are they here to take from us? Look at how we make certain things like the regulations. How many people have lost livelihoods because of the regulations, these COVID regulations that uh, we, we, we have um, uh, you know, designed for ourselves? Are you telling me they, they, they can't be better? Why don't we report the loss of livelihood, the jobs we lose, the companies that goes broke because of this pandemic. All we hear is this fear mongering of how many people are dying. Yes, people die all the time. But let's, let's, let's be fair and honest in our reporting so that we take notice of all these things and then respond comprehensively. Yeah. yeah. I, I, um, yes, I just want to add to what Desmond has said, a very, very important thing, and that is about leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, come, there's a time to come and a time to go for all of us. Mm -hmm. Those people who have liberated this country, who was in politics long before the independence of, of, of Namibia, mm -hmm. are still there, are still leading the country. And I include myself. Yeah, I, was, I, I almost also, said that I'm, you, you I'm are also, one of those. <laughs> yeah, I'm also one of those. Now, the time for us has come to go. We need young people, like Desmond has referred to, to some names. People who has made already a mark in the international business life, you know, uh, and who's still doing it. We have the young people, black and white, who has the ability to take this country forward, but who has a different way of thinking of how things should be done. But unfortunately, those young people are not being given the opportunity to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it's high time to, 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 to make it possible to bring those young people in to come and, and take over. Mm -hmm. You must fade them in. You, you can't just throw them overnight into the, to the deep side and, and think they will swim. You must bring them in, you must, you must fade them in, and the older, older guard must fade out. Yeah. Uh, that is the only way, and we can't continue with the way that we have continued for the past 30 years. I agree with you. That must stop. We must bring in new blood. We must bring them in, and they must take over the country, and they must lead this country to, to prosperity. I have trust in our young people. If I see the business people that, uh, that we have here, and Desmond is a young man. He grew up, you know, in front of me. Uh, I will never forget after independence, he was a young, young, young man, him and lastly Jacob and, <laughs> and, and, and some other young people. Mm -hmm. Today they are very, you know, very good business people. They have made their mark. They are still continuing to do it. Mm -hmm. So let those people, those young people and even younger than them yeah. come and take over. Those mm -hmm. who has the ability and, and, and the drive to do it. Yeah. You know, the older you get, the, the slower you go. And, and, and we need speed now mm -hmm. to, to bring change. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, one of the concerns um, around NIF is also the issue of uh, their fears that uh, this might propel the issue of classism and only the well-off and those who already have money will be the ones who will be benefiting from, from this if implemented. Um, I'll bounce that uh, off your minds while we go on a, uh, our second ad break and we'll come touch on it when we come back. Well, we're back, gentlemen. Uh, before we went for the break, I, I, I partly, shortly introduced uh, our next uh, subject matter, the issue of uh, perceived classism and that the well-connected are the ones who are set to benefit from uh, economic transformation policies such as NIEF. Um, Desmond, you've been in business for years. You, you are some of you, I'm sure you've also heard your name that uh, these are the people who stand to gain from uh, this setup. What is your take on that? Yeah, it, uh, it, yeah those are things that will, will, will kind of like call on your, on your moral compass mm -hmm. in terms of how far you go uh, in managing your, your test or greed, because we all come with greed as human beings. Mm -hmm. But I, somehow I think we are also compromised by the type of uh, political systems we have adopted. Democracy is good, but it's not always good everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, Namibia somehow needs benevolence, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's benevolent dictatorship, someone who has proven that they are bad other people. Mm -hmm. and, and then we entrust some of these critical roles to them to make sure that when there is an opportunity like this to transform through a give and take, mm -hmm. it should not become an opportunity for Desmond, who's better resourced, better connected, to take it all for himself. So it, it, it appeals to your moral conscience, it appeals to so many things. So it's a very difficult one. Um, there will always be those that, um, that misunderstands the part of materialism, mm -hmm. because, you know, the world is so confused that, uh, and it's also got to do with the element of apartheid, because yeah. apartheid played a very important role on, on how we have turned out to be. It's a monster that continues to wreck us apart until today. And I don't even think those that were put in an advantage position by apartheid understand its extent. Mm -hmm. Because it's something that is designed to remain in perpetuity. It's a scientific system. It, it deals with you. It's left with you. The physical system of apartheid is gone. It's got no owner. But to those it was applied to, we still struggle with it today. You know, we look at our names, for example. I can't relate to my name. Desmond, what does it mean? 
Okay? But it means something to some, somebody. I, I researched it the other day. It's a name from Ireland originally. Mm -hmm. But my name should be Dariko Hambo or something, <laughs> something that mm -hmm. relates to me because mm -hmm. therefrom I draw who I am. So I'm able then to relate to the things that makes me human. Mm -hmm. And that is also to say I cannot let my kind or somebody who's a human being mm -hmm. suffer. Because the apartheid system also begins to, to compete and conflict with the supreme ethic that God gives us, which is love. Because mm -hmm. systematically, a lot, we were subjected to a lot not to love ourselves and love other things. So, uh, in a nutshell, I want to say we, I don't think we have what it takes to be able to uh, insulate ourselves from what may come with the implementation of, of NIEF in terms of whether we can take advantage more than the next person mm -hmm. and whether I'm responsible enough to, to, when I am in that adventurous position, to know that I take enough for me and for the next person. Yeah. But it, the leadership part also comes in very, very handy mm -hmm. because you are there to lead. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. Uh, Mr. Smith, the superficial remnants of yeah. uh, apartheid, as mentioned by Desmond, how do we how do we deal with that? And because to a yeah. certain extent, um, he also alludes to the fact that uh, perhaps the inequality is yeah. also perpetuated by that, uh, yeah. because uh, certainly um, the only way to fight inequality is to ensure that uh, perhaps the income of those at the bottom of the of of of, uh, of the ladder are catered for. So how how, yeah. how do you? Yeah, work to, through that. Yeah, I think to, to start with uh, the apartheid issue, yeah, unfortunately, it, it has made a serious mark on, on the psyche of, 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 of our people, uh, especially the black people. And uh, I think it will be still for many years, this whole generation that suffered under the apartheid will first have to go, I think, uh, before we will get a new uh, a, a new era. Uh, until that time, uh, we will have to live with it, and we will try to we will have to try and to survive uh, or to rise above it. Uh, that is that, but but it is a problem so that we will have to to overcome. Uh, for for those to benefit, to come back to the NIF mm -hmm. thing that uh, mm. maybe you know only certain people with money will will benefit. Unfortunately, yeah, it's the truth, and it will always be like that. Uh, throughout the, the, especially the Western world, uh, and we consider ourselves as part of that, uh, where you have democracy and where you have, uh, you know, this way of doing business, that uh, business people are business people, and they, they will try to, to get business and to do business to benefit themselves. That's, that's, that's a fact of life. You can't blame them, you can't accuse them for that. Uh, like, we take uh, a lot of, uh, so to speak, uh, black uh, companies that, 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 uh, that started after, after independence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, many of them are very, very prosperous companies, like, Param, uh, like the company of, um, of, I don't want to mention names, but they are doing very well. Uh, it is like that, and it will be like that, and you can't blame people for, 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 for uh, doing, uh, using connections, because business is about connections. Mm. And uh, if you don't work towards having good connections, you will not get business. Mm -hmm. that, that is the fact of life. So we must, we must stop being jealous uh, you know, about people who are making a success, we must actually be thankful. And it, it is what is really hurting, it is that is, uh, it's not so much white people these days that are sort of jealous on black people making, you know, making it in life now, in business life today. Is it's hurting to see it's <laughs> black people who, who are criticizing and who has a lot of stories to, to tell and to say about their, their brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you know? 
Uh, can, you, can, you, can you relate to that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it speaks back to the apartment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's because of that. Yeah. It's because of that. <laughs> so that 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 is actually very bad. And I think we must we must we must really stop that. We must mm -hmm. actually be proud of our people who can make it in life, yeah. mm -hmm. and our people who, who's making it in life, they have a social responsibility yeah. to look to those who are still. Down there. Yeah. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. It's a very so good they are, point. They yeah, must look up. If, if I take, and you know, and I want to say it, uh, during this COVID time, there was quite a lot of white businesses who really went out to collect money, mm. to buy oxygen, mm. to do this and to this, you know, for, for hospitals, mm. uh, to, to, to buy food, to help mainly black people to survive this COVID uh, thing. Uh, I, I hardly ha heard of any black company that really went out to do something. You know, it must, if we, if we have made it in life, our companies and whatever, we have a social responsibility. We have to plow it back into our community. But, but Angus Smith, can I quickly just uh, interrupt yeah. you there? Oh, sure. The, it, it's a good thing that, um, what you have observed in terms of white companies doing what they did. But please don't uh, be oblivious to the fact that black companies are doing it on a daily basis. True. Uh, without the pandemic, because they can never be, I can never give enough. Yeah. If you just look at my societal setup, yeah. uh, I have too much uh, deficit. Yeah. Uh, to not be able to give. So yeah. occasional uh, event where you give should not be compared to what yeah. I did, do not, what you do not yeah. see me doing. Yeah. You, you get my point? No, no I, I, I agree with you there, Desmond. Uh, also, I, I know, you know, the culture of, of, of our black uh, countrymen, you know, uh, with your extended families. You, you are supporting maybe 10, 15, 20 people. For sure. Where I only support my household, you know, only my son and because I have hundred <laughs> percent unemployment in my family. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You see, no, no, that is true. I, I agree with you. Yeah. But what what I'm trying to say is that the moment when the company is making it, then he has a social responsibility really to look after the, the poor and to really to contribute to to uplift those people, yeah. uh, to give uh, scholarships and you know and uh, sponsorships and, and all those kind of things. I know it's happening but I would like to see it to happen more. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that, that's not enough. Um, they should, because they have an advantage, mm. fair or unfair. What, over, and, over and above that, what they should also do is take people who's got the capacity, the zeal, mm. the energy to want to be business people. Take yeah. them along, make them your partners, mm. turn them into those companies that you, that you are referring to, so, mm. so that we avoid a perpetual dependency uh, issue. If we want to be together, if we want to, for issues like NIEF not to be of any force and consequence to us, that's what we need to do. Because you have an advantage, and I need what you have to be able to move together, and NIEF is no longer yeah. necessary. You see, yeah. I, I, I agree with you there, Desmond. You know, uh, it is just like, like this. We, in Namibia, because we have different cultures, mm -hmm. you know, I always say to myself, these Angolan people and many of our people coming from rural areas, when they come to Vintuk or whatever to go and, and do their shopping, if you go to, to Chinatown, you see them in their numbers there, even this time when, when the shopping centers are empty, mm -hmm. you go to Chinatown, it's crowded. And I ask myself and I ask the people, why, why is it like this? say, no, these people don't like to go and shop in those smart shops, you know? They would like, they like, it's, it's more their style, you know, to go to these well, Chinese it, shops. And, and is those. it their style or is it the affordability they, issue? Also their affordability, but also, you know, also they, feel them, mm -hmm. they, feel, this, they feel this, themselves this, this, this more comfortable to, to go and shop there, mm -hmm. you know, than to go to, to, to the big shopping centers. Okay. Now, what you are saying there, that you must, we must bring other people, black people, into our companies. So if I have a black person in my company, he can advise me. He, he's also a shareholder, he's a partner. So I think we should do our business, you know, this way. If we do it this way, we will get, you know, more customers, you know, we will, we will infiltrate the market better. 
So with this, that type, because we have different perceptions of, of doing business, mm -hmm. a white person has one type of perception, a black person another one. But if we marry the two, we can do better together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 Uncle, I want to say this. Uh, you are a leader in the white community. And you and I agree, because we've had these discussions before, that you have a responsibility to play ball, to be a part of Namibia. Don't wait for somebody to reach out to you, make you feel special, come beg you to be a part. If, if you wait for that day, Niev will always be a thorn. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, 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 for example, there's a, there's a, there's a factory on your way to Oshuarongo, uh, about 50 kilometers mm -hmm. out of Oshuarongo, uh, that I think is designed to, to um, produce fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Beautiful investment. That's a good move towards industry. How come we don't see enough activities there, trucks moving, supplying Namibia? In fact, I'm hearing, I did a bit of background check, uh, that there's, there seems to be a, a problem with, uh, with, with the supply issue. So we, you have a responsibility, just like I am, after this show, to go and get Namibia Lanbo Imi. Om samte spiel, let ons help die hood opkom, so that in five years' time, that factory no longer supplies Namibia, but supplies Zambia, Malawi, and then mm -hmm. it brings back capital, mm -hmm. foreign capital that is coming back to Namibia to stay. So with those kind of things, we will not need a, a NIF. But for as long as you guys wait in a corner there and you want to be told, you want mm -hmm. the president to come to you and say, no, <laughs> yeah. come, yeah. let's no. talk. Uh -huh. We will bring you here. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to come in before we, yeah. before we end this, uh, you see, yeah, this, yeah, this topic. Yeah. Desmond, you see, that's why I agree there. You see, like a constitution, it's not necessary to be written on paper. It must be written in the heart, yeah. in your heart. Yeah. To, to grow Namibia, to grow our economy, white people and black people, they must, they must undergo a change of heart. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It must be about, and I said it many times, about the, 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 the good of our people. And we can only improve it if me and you are working together. We form a company together. If I have a company, like I said just now, uh, I, I might have a market, but I have only a certain market. But if I, have to, if I want to do good business and penetrate the full market, I must, I must bring you in. I must say, Desmond, don't you, are you not interested? Don't you want to take up shares in my company? I want to bring you in. So, in, in fact, and, the more... Then we, we the, build our company together. The more there are of us that can afford something, yeah. the better it is for you as a business owner. Yeah. Because you have no people buying from you. You get my point. Yeah. It's simple uh, yeah. basics of, of yeah, business. It's, it's basics, yeah. So, the, our colleagues has a responsibility to come. They mustn't wait to be, you know, treated with kids' glove or no. on a mm -hmm. silver platter. Yeah. They have a responsibility yeah. because mm -hmm. if they don't do that, uh, everything that uh, glitters to us is gold. Yeah. We will come for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, gentlemen, as we just uh, wrap up the show, one of the global ranking agencies that I was doing background check on um, ranked Namibia as the sixth best resourced government relative to our economic size. Six best resource government relative to our economic size. Mm. Okay. So, 30 years down the line, well, where have we gone wrong that we must still today fight over transformation policies that must come into effect to really bring about an uh, economic balance? I, I, I don't know. Um, it's... it's it's a difficult one because I don't know what methodology they followed mm -hmm. to make those determinations mm -hmm. in terms of how, yeah. how, how, how resourced right. we are commensurate to, to the size of our population. Mm -hmm. uh, let's be careful that we don't always uh, make our conclusions on the basis of some of these people mm -hmm. who are desktop uh, analysis and researchers sitting somewhere and looking at figures and make a conclusion. Mm -hmm that the world or the next person has to rely on. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, we have a very wide uh, gap between the rich and the poor. But if you look at the global uh, uh, economic size and you times or divide the number of people in your country, you will probably get to those figures. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't 
think that is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know what your view yeah. is, Uncle, but I... No, we, uh, I, 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 I with you, we must be very careful because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, about different ways of doing things. Yes. Uh, we, are, we are in Africa and our government is, is an African government, is a black government, which have different perceptions and different ways of doing things. That's not necessarily the same as those people who are doing the gradings, who are sitting there in New York or in France or wherever, having a different way of, of, of grading mm -hmm. a country's economy according to their standards and their levels. So, like Desmond was f saying earlier, that should we not get our own uh, currency, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to, to pay off our debt? And, and it's an outcry coming daily strongly out of Africa that we must do our own thing. Like these vaccines, you know, why, are we, why can't we, you know, uh, manufacture our own vaccines, you know, for this COVID thing, you know? We, we have the ability, we have, uh, you know, the scientists who can do it. So I think we should, to a large extent, grade our economy according to, to, to different standards, not necessarily the standards of, you know, that's coming from, yeah. from, from there. So, uh, but I must say that I think all of us are not very happy with the way in which the, the government has run this country economically for the past 30 years. I think if it was done differently, more people orientated, people development orientated, then we would have been much further. We would not have that huge gap because for the, for the, for the government, for the ruling party, not be able to narrow that gap over a period of 30 years says a lot. They could have done much better. We could have narrowed that gap. No, I, 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 Uncle, I think mm -hmm. I want to differ with you there. Yeah, yeah, oh, so it, it, it comes down to politics now. I was expecting <laughs> for him to react. Yeah, no, no, uh, I, I, <laughs> can you I, just I, give a disclaimer about your position in yeah, the yeah, ruling I, party? Please. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I think Uncle knows that. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a district uh, treasurer of Window East. Mm -hmm. And I, my view uh, is completely different from yours. And in fact, I think the evidence on the ground will support mine. Uh, the government has done a lot in bringing about change because you can only say, make that statement in a comparative context to what it was, what it is today. There's more of us who has the ability to play in the economy than it was before. That's a fact. Government has not always had the best and enough resources to be able to bring about the desired change. Mm -hmm. Of course, because of, uh, the, the, I agree with you, government could have run the economy better, but on a scale of one to 10, they've done above average. That's true. And we must also be fair and honest and look at the historical context where we come from as a government. Swapo doesn't have a track record of running a country. It learned on the job, but it did a wonderful job. But look at what uh, the previous, if we have to compare now, what the previous government has done with all the knowledge it had, the resources and support. It, those two things can't compare because it didn't cater for everybody. It looked good on paper because it was con the budget or the resources was confined only for the privileged few. But I tell you this, if we were to reverse roles and we say, let's go back and the same apartheid government was to do what Swapo is doing today, I think they would have failed decimally mm -hmm. because they didn't grow the economy much. They just did enough for themselves. And the rest was just good for, you know, to complement the economy on, on the basis of cheap labor and low skill. Yeah. That, that, that I think, mm -hmm. but we can continue this discussion yeah. another time. <laughs> yeah, I think Since uh, we are reaching the end yeah, of the let's, show. Let's just wrap up. I just want um, your exit comments. Um, yeah. Also, Niev, the way forward, and then sure. just wrap up briefly. Sure. Uh, but before I go to Niev, I, I want to put a challenge to my uncle to say, from this show, you and I have a responsibility to go around and change the hearts and minds of our white colleagues, especially those in the credit committees of the banks. When applic black, black applications come to them, they mustn't look at it as, yeah, this is a black person now going to buy a car. No, they must assist this, uh, these applications 
from a national development point of view. It is good for them at the end of it. When you give me money, I go on to do things, I create jobs, those people come and buy from you, they come from the bank and borrow again. So I think there's also that, uh, I don't know whether it's a superiority or inferiority complex <laughs> that we must overcome. Yeah. That's a very important yeah. one. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 your, last, your last comments. Yeah. On, on that, <clears throat> I really, I, I'm actually surprised that you say that it's still the situation. It is. Because if you look at the banks, really, FNB, all the banks, I don't want only to mention them, but all the banks, the majority of people there who are doing this type of work, uh, allocating loans and approved loans and those, are, are, are mainly black people. No, no, they, they are those, they are, those are just data collectors. They, they come to you, but the decisions no. are taken in the back room yeah. and, and with South African yeah. approval. Yeah. Let's, let's, That's let's a fact. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, I, I'm surprised to hear that, really. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm actually uh, not happy. If, if that is the case, it's, it's totally unacceptable to me because I thought we are past that. You know, that, uh, that's why we are putting more and more, you see more and more black people in charge of, of, of companies and also departments and those kind of things just to, to get past that, that hurdle, you know. To, I, I'm to, sorry to again, but I actually <laughs> made this statement deliberately to provoke banks. Because yeah. my application will always say, in the event it's approved, it's, yeah. it's prime plus. But yours will, in all likelihood, be prime minus. And I'm provoking <laughs> the banks, actually, yeah. if they want to start yeah. this conversation. Yeah. No, if, if that is the case, I think uh, that seriously needs to be addressed and, and to yes. look into. But uh, as I've said to I think, uh, on more, more than one occasion, that the whole thing is a change of, of heart, really. We, from, 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 from my side as a white person, I'm calling on the white people, please, you know, to, 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 to share, to open, to open their businesses, to open their hearts for the betterment of the people of this country, really. To me, to me there's no color, honestly. For me, it's about our people. I'm a Namibian like you and like every other person in this country. Yeah, I don't you. see color. And uh, for me, it's just the suffering of our people and uh, to improve the life quality of, of our people. So, and, and I will go a long way to, to convince my people. Thank you. And, uh, and also to, to bring them in into their businesses because we must change the face of, of, of our- Business Namibia. Business, you know, in, in Namibia, you know. Yeah. If I walk into a, uh, I don't, and that's why I have a big fight against the South African uh, companies, this uh, chain shops and those type of things, you know. If you go there, all the tellers and the packers and those people, you know, uh, uh, working in uh, packing the shelves, and this, those, those are our Namibian people. But if you look at the top people, they, they are South Africans. They are even not only white people, they are South African white people. And, and also the way the things are being run in this country, that uh, those those big chain shops, you know, are all linked, their bank accounts are linked to South Africa. If, I, if they deposit this morning, yesterday's stakings, within five minutes, that money is in South Africa. You know, <laughs> and, and all these big companies, Outflow. they must show the, the things that they have, the money that they have invested in this company, in this country. Yeah. Majority of them are renting buildings, you know. They don't invest and put up buildings and infrastructure, you know, for for the development of this country. And I have a big issue with that. Yeah. The same as I have a big issue with, uh, uh, you know, uh, white companies only trying to maintain those companies white, you know. Uh, we must open up. If we are say we are Namibian, then we must, we must practice what we preach. We, we must yeah. be in, in, in all, 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 all spheres of, of business. Okay. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your insight tonight. It was indeed a pleasure having you on set. Um, to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and staying, staying very, very <laughs> active and uh, viewing the show tonight. Have a pleasant one.